Thanks. Well, let's get uh, some reaction to that interview with the Secretary of the State. Our Deputy Political Editor Joey Jones joins me now from Westminster, also in central London, is the welfare expert Professor Peter Saunders of Sussex University. Uh, Professor Saunders, you've looked at this problem all over the world. How does Britain rate compared, let's say, with its nearest neighbours on welfare? Uh, well, most Western countries have the similar problems that we've got. Uh, we've all got this, this burgeoning welfare bill. Uh, most European countries failed to get on top of this even during the long economic boom years uh, that we've all enjoyed. I suppose Britain, uh, in comparison with Europe, uh, we don't do very well on getting single parents into work, for example. I think most European countries have tighter expectations uh, on uh, single parents returning to work earlier. Uh, than we do, and indeed, I mean, until recently, we said you could uh, stay on welfare until your, your uh, youngest child was 16. That's now being reduced down to seven, but even seven is quite generous compared with uh, most other European countries. Uh, I think what, all what of us the have States, got Professor problems. Saunders, what about the United States and Australia? Well, the, the US, I think, stands out when you do these international comparisons. The US had this dramatic welfare reform in 1996. Uh, and the five years, for five years following that, they reduced the number of people on benefits by 60%. Uh, some states, Wisconsin is the one that people really get excited about. Wisconsin reduced uh, welfare claimants by 88% in five years. Now, that was a big bang, dramatic uh, welfare reform. And of course, even what Ian Duncan Smith is describing, I don't think he's going to get anywhere near that. Joey, we've heard the discussions going on inside the coalition cabinet. What about the Labour leadership? Is there any division amongst the five candidates on this issue? Who's talking tough and who's not? I think certainly there is division, but at the moment they know that the awkward, uh, the, the party that is having to make all the awkward decisions is, uh, well, the parties, is the coalition. So they want to throw the owners back uh, on Ian Duncan Smith and uh, his colleagues. I think <clears throat> what we are going to see is ultimately, clearly, because the questions that, uh, as Ian Duncan Smith was saying, George Osborne are posing him, are testing questions. They are difficult questions. You are going to have a tricky negotiation, but ultimately that negotiation will be settled one way or another in the next few weeks and then he has to get on with the task of actually making it work uh, I think we all recognize and he recognizes that it's an enormous task uh, in front of him but I think that we as journalists have become uh, we are perhaps professional skeptics if you like uh, there is a degree of skepticism as a, around as to whether or not he can make good on the sorts of promises uh, that we are clear, clearly hearing the worry right at the moment in the immediate negotiation is that one or two of those skeptics seem to be not so far away from me in the Treasury. Well, precisely so, Joan, uh, Joey. I think we're right to be sceptical, uh, given the record of uh, all governments on this issue. Professor Saunders, if you had to give one piece of advice to the government, uh, we have a minister sitting with us here, what would it be? I think don't get too hung up on the idea of making work pay. I mean, obviously it's desirable that if somebody moves from welfare into work that they should be better off. But I feel that that is becoming sort of... That's dominating the thinking. And I think one of the lessons that we can learn from America, for example, is that that wasn't really their emphasis. Their emphasis was on... Uh, conditionality, the principle that you should work uh, if you're capable of working, even if it makes you no better off, even if you are no better off than being on benefits, you should work as a, as a, as a moral imperative. And I think Professor Saunders, let, let me interrupt there because I've still got the, yeah. uh, the minister with me. Can I put that to you, Ian Duncan Smith? There is a moral imperative here to work even if it doesn't make you better off. Can you sell that to the electorate? Uh, I bet yeah, you two can't. things very quickly. The American reforms were fine because the going was good. Actually, what, if you go and have a look at the American reforms right now, one of their biggest problems is there is nowhere for many of them to go if they can't get work. So, yeah, I accept that what they did with conditionality, which is right, and we will have conditionality. The truth, though, is if it is clear that work pays, then what actually happens is you also create this other dynamic, and that's the worth reading our report. So, yes, it does. You can put conditionality in, and you can put it in quite strongly, providing, of course, they know that all the way up the chain it pays better, and it makes it just that bit easier. Conditionality, though, that, say the professor, will be there and is a critical part of the system. Joey Jones, Professor Saunders, Ian Duncan-Smith, many thanks for joining us. We really do appreciate it. This is Jeff Randall live.